Hello, and you are by chance watching this because you had seen my previous podcast and actually wanted to know what my true answer was to the 100 days question that I had. Well, the answer was going to be exceedingly long, so I decided, heck, why not just, you know, cut it out and be done with it. But then I was convinced by my special guest, the ginger fella, and a few others to, hey, why not just make it a separate video and put, answer, put your answer to it? And then have it posted on your site so then everybody else knows your personal inner thoughts about political organization and inner workings and how much of a tyrant you would actually be. Because no one, nobody would live. The next day would be fire and brimstone. But in all seriousness, this is my actual answer and my actual idea and plan if, by chance, or miraculous chance, I had some sort of power. So, everybody, if you're interested, welcome. You're going to enjoy it, or maybe you'll enjoy it, or you might find it to your... I don't know. You might, you might, you might get a little fancy about it. Who knows? Like I say, though, normally put some comments below if you're interested for uh, comments or whatever you want to say, or you have any criticisms, preferably. Also, I'm gonna plug it in now. Check out my podcast if you have not, and you're just tuning into this. It's the fourth podcast that has relevance to this question with my special gingery friend guest. So, without further ado, and after immense amount of time delaying, here is my answer. Finally, we come to my point of view on it. So, the first 100 days for me, the first day, nukes everywhere. Now, there will never be a greater president than me, nor will there be another president after me. Because <laughs> it's gone. Dead. Dead. Everything's gone. Nobody survived. And if they survive, I already have nuke backups ready to go. go pew, pew. In the entire ball of fire and hell. And that's what I want to leave my uh, presidency at. So because you, you want to be the Johnny Cash of presidents? The burning ring of fire? Uh, I was thinking more like uh, Lamb of God. Now you have something to die for. Now or now you got something to die for. Touché. So, you know, everybody needs a second. <laughs> and then, but it will be a quick death, mind you. It will be, you know. Less humane of you. Well, I mean, I try to be as humanely as possible. Because literally, if I actually started on my first hundred days, it is going to be an intrinsic and in death conversation, or actually lecture on my part. And I really don't want to put a lot of people to sleep on it. So would you be an unracist version of Hitler? No. Only because the concept of Hitler is he wanted to kill a certain race. Yeah, so that's, that's what, what made him evil. Yes. But Mao is much worse than him. Zing, uh, Zao, uh, Zing Dao Mao. I, I totally missaid his first name. But Mao, if anybody knows him. The one who founded the communist uh, state of China. Who actually murdered him equivalently to 81 to 85 million of his own people during his cultural revolution and the entirety of his agricultural revolutions and policies in the span of like five years. Whoa. So, oh, I mean, and then you have Stalin who completed the entire genocide of the Ukrainian population creating the uh, Ukrainian famine, which is one of the worst famines in history where he literally robbed all of Ukraine's, most of Ukraine's grain reserves as well as... Uh, you know, food parcels and such, and pretty much 40 to 45 million Ukrainians died in a span of a year. Gracious. So, in tyrants in the comparisons of mass murder, Hitler's really low. I mean, Hitler's like number four or five, because probably actually lower than that. He's probably like an eight. Not saying he's a good guy, by all means, no, but six million Jews compared to the 80s and 90 millions that nobody knows, it's all of the, uh, it's the writers of history who make people right and he lost history so he's a evil guy stalin won history mao won history guess what happened nobody knows well and, and didn't alexander the great say something along the lines of now and i'm paraphrasing of course but something along the lines of uh history is written by the victors or was that napoleon napoleon is it napoleon history is written by the victors indeed yeah but it's very this. good point, Mr. Mr. Uh, it's, it's what it is. It's what it is. But yeah, pretty much essentially anybody who wins history or wins any wars get the right and dictate how their history is going to be. But needless to say, 
I am. I'm very intrinsic in the government system as to what I would view we should do. In my first 100 days, you would be a lot of... I'm going to be simplistic and vague only for the simple fact that I can go in depth and I don't want to do that because we got a lot of other things to get over with. But I would completely restructure the entire bureaucracy of like... Gosh, the tax systems alone. You could just restructure everything in that. The whole concept of the IRS, how they get and recuperate taxes, completely change the tax codes from one inside and out. That would be a monumental task. Like, even with the DMV, the whole process of why it's so long and why it takes such an amount of time for the Department of Tra Transportation to deal and accusations with things is just unrealistic. It means the bureaucracy is overwhelmed and bloated to the point where things are not functioning in a correct manner to get things going back to smooth legs. You would need to cut so much fat on these pieces of meat. It's unrealistic. Just like even with gun laws, I am probably the Second Amendment. I'm a strong believer in that, simply from the economic standpoint, as opposed to the right, oh, I have a right to own a gun. Okay, yeah, you have a right to own a gun. I think everybody has a right to own anything and everything that they want. They only lose that right once it passes from their point of reach and their point of existence, meaning the extent of your hands, you have all the freedoms you want as long as it does not interfere or affect another person. So I mean if you gotta obviously you need stronger restrictions and regulations on guns, not simply to, you know, I, I think okay, I'm a type I'm mixed on an assault rifle thing only because only because I think everybody should have a right to own something, but I think the laws and restrictions should be more intense. The whole mental aspect needs to be accountable, accountable, uh, accounted for, simply because the whole healthcare debauchery, the whole education system. I am the person who would probably be the most extensive in my administration. Would I would be the tyrant if I could be, because I would have to gut everything out. You would have to gut into Congress. You have to gut into. Uh, Department of Education, you have to gut into the Department of Commerce, Agriculture, Foreign Policy. My foreign policy would probably be my all-time strongest suit, only because I love the idea of foreign policy and I love dealing with other nations, but I feel like my domestic policies would be very, very strong, but it'd be very abrasive. It would be a lot of laissez-faire, but corporations would not be able to skip out. But this is assuming that I have the unprecedented power and support in the Houses, the House and the Senate. Now, if I had that, I could push a lot of things. And I know I'm going to have to do a lot of earmarks, a lot of a lot of bills. It would take forever. But in my scenario, as soon as I become president and all of a sudden emergency powers be vested upon me, boom, Congress is completely abolished. Not forever, mind you. And no, I'm not going to be one of those dictators that, you know, after about 15 years or 100 years, let's say I'm going to be a dictator. Obviously, not going to be a tyrant, but... The original term for dictator was not evil in the implication as it was before. Back in the day with so uh, uh, Aristotle and uh, Sophocles, I think I said, no, Socrates, thank you. I have a terrible time at talking sometimes. But uh, Socrates, they had talked about a benevolent dictator. That is what I'm going to go for there. I'm going to try to be a benevolent dictator. And what I had actually planned to do is, upon my death, if I had not structurally reorganized the transportation, the infrastructure, the education, the healthcare, the uh, economics, the markets, the business, everything. If America is not at a top rate five in, in the top categories, one to ten on every board, if America is not at that time by then, then I have ultimately failed and my whole family should be extinguished. Your whole seed. Everything about me. Hmm. But say I've gotten to that point and I die, what I'll do is I'm going to put it in a clause when I first become in office to prove this point. It's going to be a law. I'm going to have it enacted. As soon as I die, these men are going to be Congress. Congress is going to have its actions. Congress is going to have a lot of limitations, not in power, but uh, limitations on the terms, make it more organizable, make it more structurally sound in a sense where it's not just big bloated, con this big bloated thing so then things can move more smoothly. So what you're telling me is, you can't build a house with shit foundation. No. You can't build anything with what we got at the moment. So if you have the ability, there would be some major changes immediately. Oh, yeah. The first 100 days would be probably more... And truth be told, if I had it in my sense, my way, the 
first hundred days would be completely just it, the world would change drastically in the first hundred days for me. The entire structure of the government would be hundred percent change. State governments would be dealing with a lot of federal pressure on my part, and a lot of states' right, state activists, or states' rights pro people, they would hate. Me. And we're gonna have a lot of. I won't lie, a lot of populations would be very aggressively. A lot of big wig people would probably hate me because of the fact that I would be like the Teddy Roosevelt of our time. I would be busting in there antitrust laws. I would be breaking up these monopolies. I would be just a forehammer of it all. The military would see a huge boost from me, but not in the sense of being battered as more as using the resources they are in the R&D departments. We have such a more clear picture of what they're going to be doing. The, the homogeny of America would be Truth be told, the homogeny of America would be more concrete and more solidified. Our, like, for me, I feel like, you give me this much time, I could be able to do a lot of things. And trust me, there's going to be a lot of civil strife, there's going to be a lot of unrest, and I'm going to be, I would be considered a benevolent monarch. Or, not monarch, I hate monarchies. I'd be a benevolent dictator. Or if I'm... Uh, the evils of the Empire, the structure. Yeah, if I could have a Lord Vader, that'd be good too. Well, but <laughs> out of curiosity, then. So, so with that being said, first of all, if you ran, I, we're, we're not. I don't even like. You, but if we ran, if you ran, I'd vote for you. I like that. But out of curiosity, what what is your opinion on different states? If, look, first of all, if we are United States, how is it that all of them are so different? Why is it that, that one state, for example, you take Colorado now, I was talking about these types and all that good stuff earlier, but I could care less about the smoking aspect of marijuana. That, that, that to, first of all, is the least important thing about that stuff. Right. The, the ability to use him and, 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 and just how incredible that kind of product would be, how you know, useful it would be, all, all those kind of things that go into it. Colorado, has already paid off all of their their right. debts, all those things within the first two years, or right. less. And they had an over surplus from the from the budget of the first year. They had a surplus, and they didn't know what to do with the extra surplus, so they just put it back into it and let the original uh, the budget that they had it for going to education. And, and uh, well, and that's yeah. yes, sir. And that was that is exactly the point that I was trying to get to is that they started putting it back into things. That would make that state even better. They 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 donated the homeless. Right. They worked on education. No social. Yeah, use exactly. that uh, revenue for what they were getting. So your question being, so my question being, you were already talking about doing those things, but on a larger scale. So what is you, you know, why do you think it is the way that it is set up currently? Well, that's how did just, it get to this point? How did we get here? Oh well. That's a, that is a modestly easy question in the sense that each region in the world, just like if you compare, make a comparison to like Europe and stuff, each region has their own set of populations. Like if you look towards Mon uh, Minnesota and stuff, they're more Germanic, they're more Viking, Nordic sort of. If you go further east, like uh, say New York, New England, those areas, like Pennsylvania was originally a state colonized by Quakers. There are a lot more religious fundamentalists further south. You go into the southern states, obviously the Bible Belt. There are more sure. Baptists, more Protestant in a sense of less liberalizing, but more you know conservative and controlling. The further west you go, like California, Oregon, Washington, you have more Oriental styles. You have more open word, uh, open thoughts and stuff. Further down Texas, you got more aggressive, more standoff. They had to fight for a lot of the territory. They are very tenacious, they're very pragmatic in their views. It's just the regions and how they've uh, formed themselves over time and stuff. And that's ultimately where states' rights comes in because a state, as the state will know by its own legislation and their own governance that how they need to handle their own state and how they feel like they should. And so that's the big question between states' rights and federalist, federal rights where the balancing act is where you necessarily be. But to be more particular on your comment, for like the federal, the laws on marijuana. Yeah, obviously they're archaic in their own terms. You would, I would, in my beliefs, I would eliminate it as a federal offense completely. It would be decriminalized, obviously, but at that point, I would leave it up to the states to decide how they wanted to handle their own thing. I would also decriminalize and not make it so much legal, but 
let the states do their own thing all the way up to a point to where in the system when 16 states get it it becomes legal legalized as opposed to just de uh, decriminalized so with that being said i would let the states handle their own parsis their own parsecs in that but i would eliminate the DI uh, dea for sure in that sense i would first war on drugs is a complete waste of utter time to everybody and everything because all you're doing is throwing money at a fire pit and you're only making the fire bigger you're not solving it so with that said the federal government would take a huge chunk of their hands out of that kind of fire pit and i'd probably reinvest that into like the uh shoot cia fbi those guys let them do what they need to do and then when states are making their own decisions and stuff send advisors let them work together give some make sure that the states have what information they need and what funding and if i like what the states are doing as a fe as a uh, federal government i can fund them i can say hey listen we'll get you they're applying for grants and stuff and what the government does if a government likes like the federal government likes what a state's doing in a certain policy they will give them grants, give them more money, encourage them to do it better and build upon what they're doing and help them because that's the kind of growth we want. And if they're doing a growth I don't like, obviously, in the federal government, I would, you know, I would retract what funding I would give them and, you know, I would push them more progressively in the way I thought. Not progressively in the sense of progressive, but in a sense of progressive as I view it because that's obviously what a federal government would sue. I would stick strongly with that because I do believe the American government, as it is, the structure that it was designed on originally, works exceedingly well. Even though I'm a hard Bernie Sanders fan and I hate how the super delegates the whole situation has, I understand why it does that. But the parties themselves are not the instrument of the original government. They formulated from the Whigs and the Tor Tory system in England, which was a parliamentary system, and then they completely changed over here because Parliament is completely different than the, uh, the Democratic uh, Republic that we have. So, as I delegated, or delegated, as I rambled on tenaciously, I would ultimately decriminalize it. No federal agents would be busting down your door, be doing this, doing all that junk. We, there would be not this funding for this sort of thing. Like in Colorado, I like what they're, they're reusing their money and stuff, and you know, I'd be like, hey, you know, that's not bad. If, you know, another state says, hey, you know, we're going to do, we want to be part of taking into it too, like Wyoming, say, because they're adjacent to it, and you have international or inter, uh, state trading between the two. That's when the government, the federal government starts regulating stuff. Now, I would put my own restrictions, regulations, and codes to, you know, make funds and stuff, but it wouldn't be in the same sense as, uh, well, Congress actually handles that, handles the person, uh, interstate uh, commerce. But... That would be the only time I'd intervene on the whole state issue of like uh, containment drugs and stuff like that. Now, when it comes to like police agencies and handling problems that are necessary for the safety of the people and the safety of the society, you can bet that I would be like some of the state laws that they have. Now, I would rewrite a lot of state codes, but not just me personally, but I would get a team of administrators, obviously, because I personally can't do it, but I would oversee the end results of it and I'd have them pulled from each state that they particularly know and extensively because this is what they did in World War II after Japan after they completely America occupied Japan after 1945 uh, Douglas MacArthur got a whole crop 20 to 30 uh, experts American experts and Japanese experts over Japan and so they structured the government based off of Japan previously because the Japanese government system wasn't wrong and how they did it it was just the wrong party the war party got in the head. They weren't fascists. They didn't have that kind of ideology. The thing was, they had the war party that came into power, and so that war party led them on into this, this crazy thing that ended up happening. But, my point being, I would get advisors, people who are intelligent in this system, to come up, we would work in each state particularly, come up with a set of laws that are not draconic, but that would work with the states themselves, show them that, and then work with the state delegations, which that would become a long progress uh, process in itself, only because you'd have the state delegates being like, hey, no, Mitch McConnell, for instance, hey, no, I want my country, I want my state to be as backwards as possible because uh, I'm 99 years old and I ain't doing shit. Also, for the record, he is a humanoid piece of vomit that really should not exist because he is a complete, utter imbecile in all capacities involving 
anything progressive or, you know, productive to the entirety of the state of Kentucky, as well as uh, Blevins for the governorship, which I, <laughs> okay, stopping there. Needless to say, I would do my best to organize things in a system that would be not only fair, but balanced, as well as constructive. All, I would use the federal funds in this ways that they were supposed to be used. I would try to nip corruption in the butt. And from that point on, I would just play it by ear, work with the best options we have, and go everything based on merit. So, so from, from what I'm hearing so far, you would be an unbiased, as humanly possible, as now mind you, because yes, yes. I am gonna have, I'm going to have bias, but I'm going to try to do my best to, in my view, make the world a better place, but, you know, it's it's all to each other. But to do right by people without making those decisions... Completely on my own on my own choices. Yes, and, and, and making them, you know, you only making the decision when it benefits you. Exactly, because... So, uh, Yes, sir. So I know I agree completely with everything that you said. Because yeah, the constant the concept of a democracy working flawlessly in a free market society is not going to do that. But the whole concept of the free market with the capitalism idea and democracy is people have to be happy. And if people are happy, then that's that's what you want. And people you you got to you gotta differentiate between what's right and what's wrong, but you also gotta differentiate what is plausible what isn't like when you have a great ape saying i'll oh, make america great i'll oh, make america great okay look he's a businessman that's great you know he's handled businesses he is completely in charge of those businesses he's only known it in an authoritarian state because a business in itself that kind of business and okay if anybody is a trump a trumpet a trumpeteer seriously you need a bullet because look at his businesses alone. Not just his financial aspects of his businesses, everything has Trump. Everything says Trump. He has such an ego, egotistical view of himself. It isn't so much that he's a, he, he isn't a bad, uh, he is the creation of the, of the entirety of what we hate in the capitalist world that we are in now. The we organizations, the, the businesses, the corruption, everything. He is the epitome of that. And that's what you don't want. You want something that's more... I mean, I will say it. For all intents and purposes, I, I, am a, I am more of a 75-25% on Obama. He came in with a lot of promises. He delivered on a third of them. His foreign policy is where he shines, I feel, the best. Because from a foreign policy standpoint and living in these other places and dealing with this kind of thing, I was in, a, I was in other countries when Bush was around. And I experienced a lot of hardships because of his policies. Because he was, he was a decent human being, but he wasn't capable of leading the world in the sense that he needed to. But Obama now, when it comes to foreign policies, Americans... You, okay, you don't make decisions if you don't have an idea. You don't get a job based off because you say, I want the job. You get a job because you have the merit, you have the skills, you have the experience, you have the understanding of the job that you're getting. Sometimes, depending on the type of job you're getting into, now mind you, the higher enchilance, specialist stuff, that's different. But I'm getting on a tangent again. Leave the work and the jobs that need to be filled by the people that need to be filled. Leave that alone. You don't need a politician to run a government. You need a statesman. You don't need populations being like, he's the best one. I like him. I like, I, like, I like him. Hey, Becky, what are you doing over there, sister? Why are you pregnant to give my baby? You're my sister, aren't you? You don't need that. I, I am picking on certain populations because that is the quintessential aspect of the populations that we have a tendency to deal with and have to listen to. Just, I, I, this actually delved into a rant. I knew it would happen because... <laughs> When it comes to governments and all this fun stuff, that's my forte in a lot of things. But the fact of the matter is, 100 days, I would put all my energy into my position. I would pick the best solutions for the right places, pick the right options as humanly right possible. It wouldn't be necessarily the lesser of two evils. It would be more or less, if I could, the lesser of the best choice and the better choice is what I would do my best to go on. But all of you must die. So, in my first day, the nuclear holocaust would happen, because as you can tell, everything that I would want to do wouldn't be able to happen. So, 
now everybody knows why I said, push the button, give me the code, hurry, I got to do it, nobody's getting to it, fuck you, SpaceX doesn't exist no more, ha ha ha, pew 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 pew, bloom, everybody dies.